Hello and welcome to Coffee and Connections with the Chief. As you see here, the Chief is not with us, so I'm taking over. I'm going to say welcome to Coffee and Connections with the Captain. So who I have here today is, to my right, um, is Supervisor Mia Lyons. Uh, she runs the Dispatch Center and she'll talk about the Dispatch Center and all the calls that we got in there instead of me doing it. And to my left here is Principal James Riley of the middle school. Um, we have him here today. He's moved in. He was over at Crescent Lake. He's been with the district for seven years? Seven. And four years over at, um, as principal at Crescent Lake. He's just moved into the principal position over at the middle school and then he'll talk a little bit more about that. So we're in the month of August and um, in the month of August for the chief and I, it's budget time. So we're, we're starting to prepare the budget for 2020, which is amazing that we're already starting doing that. But um, basically the end of July is when we first get it on paper. We start meeting with a few people, um, the few um, budget members, um, selectmen members, um, and then we get into meeting with the town manager, the finance director in September, and that's the first process of the budget. Um, this year, um, not many major things in the budget that we're going for. Uh, last year we did um, add that officer, which I'll talk about a little bit, uh, which is Benjamin Church. He started July 1st. Um, he's basically mirroring another officers as we speak and um, out in the um, riding around. So if you see him, say hi. Eventually I'll get him on here. Him and um, Officer Dustin, they're going to the academy on September 3rd. So good luck to them out there. Octo uh, August 19th will be their PT test down at the academy. Um, so that's a big day for them, both of them. So they're basically, um, what the PT test is, it's a phys physical agility test. And for the academy in the state of New Hampshire, what they require down there is a mile and a half run, uh, sit-ups and push-ups. So you go down there, they, they take their run, they t do the sit-ups and push-ups. And once they pass that, they get a whole bunch of information, uniforms down there, what to expect the first day on September 3rd, and uh, they'll be down there. So let's talk about the PD, what's going on down there. Um, the police department right now, it's summertime, August, it's hot, so you do see them walking down the downtown area. Um, we do have the grants that are out there from Highway Safety. Um, my usual speech there is uh, you have distractive driving, which I say every uh, month is don't use those cell phones. Put them down, use those Bluetooths. If you have them in your hand and you're driving, that's, that, that's against the law, you can't do that. So you can't have them in your hand thinking that you're on a speakerphone and still operate a vehicle. You gotta have it down, put down, use one of those little devices, accessories that can clip onto the um, inside of the vehicle. Um, most cars now have Bluetooth, but if you don't have that, just wait, pull over. Um, it's, it's just not worth it. Uh, we have the DWIs, uh, Driving While Intoxicated Grants. We have the STEP Grants, the Safe Commute Grants, and uh, the w Pedestrian Grants, which you'll see our officers downtown. Um, so this year, actually I forgot the piece of paper in the uh, cruiser, but um, for last year to this year, like I mentioned last month, um, for our stats, uh, for 2007, I mean 2018, for the incidents we had, there was 290 incidents, and with the arrest, there was only 257. This year, coming from January to um, June, the end of June, the incidents we have right now is 310, and the arrests that we do have, um, I believe, is 215. So uh, there is a big margin of increase in those two um, lines that I've just talked about. Um, the officers are busy compared to last year. They've been go increasing every year. Um, and same thing as dispatch, which she'll, um, she'll talk about in a little bit. Um, the calls have been steady, especially summertime. We don't add any people, uh, officers, into our um, staffing. So whatever we have during the winter time is really what we have during the summertime. So they get very busy during the summer with all the um, added um, tourists that come into town, um, your normal everyday uh, calls that do come in on that. So the officers are busy, see them out there. Um, Claire Briggs is doing a great job as part-time. She's out there by herself. Um, you'll see her more out there, usually about two days a week. She did, 
She really helps out the other officers so they can catch up on their paperwork uh, to get out there. So she's doing a great job. Uh, we are still looking for part-timers, if anyone's interested out there, for officers. Um, we really would like uh, certified officers, but if anyone's interested, please contact myself or the chief of police. You can email us anytime if you're interested in that. Send a cover letter and resume um, for right now. And what I'll do is I'll turn it over to Supervisor Mia Lyons, and she'll talk about dispatch. Good morning. Thank you. Um, I'm the dispatch supervisor for the, um, the Wolf Bar Police Department. I've been supervisor for about 14 years. I've been there 16 years total. Um, we take a wide variety of calls, a lot of walk-ins. So far up to June, we've handled over t almost 24,000 calls into the Central Dispatch Center. We've had over 2,400 walk-ins that have come in looking for directions, looking for information in town, see what type of events are going on in town, looking to speak to an officer, just looking for any type of general information. They're there to see it with the dispatcher. We've handled over 800 911 phone calls that have come in for any type of emergency throughout the town for anyone that needs assistance in calling there. The dispatch center runs solely on five full-time dispatchers, one permanent part-time dispatcher, and three per diem dispatchers. We try to have an overlap here and there during the week, sometimes on weekends. A larger number of calls come in with these dispatchers who handle all types of calls from a barking dog complaint to a power outage in town to somebody looking for information on the parade and fireworks um, to a tourist looking for directions to wild animal calls. The range is just goes on and on and on. The number of calls that come into the dispatch center and these dispatchers are trained in order to handle any type of phone call that may come in while also assisting an officer on the radio, while also assisting somebody that's walking in, looking for information, looking for where to go into town for resources that they may need. Um, dispatchers go through an extensive training to be able to go handle and handle these type of calls. They go through a six to eight week process at the center with certified trained um, field training office dispatchers who can train them. And then they also have to go to the state for another week to learn how to use a certain system, a spot system, to order to run all the information that they may need. Um, the dispatch center is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Somebody's on duty at all times. There is usually not many much of a dull moment, and they assist in any way they can with the public, the officers, the citizens, anything that they may need. So what I call central dispatch is really the hub of Wolfboro, if you think about it. Um, every call that comes in after hours, more likely during the day, everyone's calling dispatch, uh, central dispatch to get some information, as she says, directions, um, the electric department, the highway department, uh, the beaches all have lifeguards down there where the um, dispatch takes care of. Uh, these, these, all this communication is coming in. We have other towns, state police, sheriffs, sometimes use our dispatch center depending on uh, their dispatch, if they're busy or not, they can actually come over and use us. So it, it, it really is the hub of Wolfboro um, and all the communication that comes in. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's just not just fire and police. It's amazing how much actually phone calls come in and all the walk-ins that do come in on a daily basis that basically dispatches your greeter. Um, other than just dispatching. So th they'll guide you to wherever you need to go, the information that you need, and you can just give them a call. Um, some few, few other things before I give it over to um, Principal James Riley. Coming up in August, we do have the Granite Man Triathlon. I believe it's August 17th and 18th. Um, I know it's that weekend. I just, I believe it's that, um, those are the dates. But be careful on those weekends. There's going to be a lot of bicycles, a lot of runners. Um, the swimmers you don't have to worry about. They're out in the water unless you have a boat. Um, just, just be careful of those out there. So um, they're going to be running up. They do start near Cary Beach. They run up Forest Road. I mean, they, they bike up Forest Road and head um, north on Forest, I mean, on uh, South Main Street uh, into Tufton Bar. And they come up around to 109. They follow Tufton Bar, go down to Pier 19, and come back around up on 109A, um, Pine Hill Road and then down Wombach and back down to Cary Beach. So keep an eye on that. They're out there. There will be officers um, doing some traffic on certain areas, more likely Forest Road, South uh, North Main Street, Wombach, North Main Street, 
and uh, Pine Hill Road and Wombach, getting those bikers in there safely because they, they are riding. They're trying to win. <laughs> They're trying to beat everybody else out there, so they don't want to stop for any vehicles. So be careful of that. We also have uh, the, uh, the street fair, which is going to be on the 2nd and 3rd of Friday and Saturday um, at the Cape Park. Not Cape Park, I mean Brewster Field. So be careful of that. There's, there's a lot of pedestrian activity in that general area. So be careful of um, all the pedestrians and crossing the roads and all that. But let me turn it over to um, Principal James Riley. He'll give a little introduction of who he is and his, um, what he's going into this year. Thank you, Captain. Uh, thank you for the opportunity really to introduce myself and, and get an opportunity to get in front of families and children uh, to start our school year. Uh, again, my name is James Riley. I've been with the district. This will be my eighth year. I taught in the Seacoast for eight years prior to that. And I went to the University of New Hampshire for my undergraduate and graduate degrees. And for the last four years, I've been the principal at the Crescent Lake School here in Wolfboro. And prior to that, in the district, kind of facilitating special education meetings, being the out-of-district coordinator, um, and also the court liaison. So in those roles, I've uh, been able to really work closely with Wolfboro Police and many of the stakeholders with here within the community. So having the opportunity to actually serve all the communities here as a Kingswood Middle School principal, I'm greatly looking forward to uh, working with a great staff. Uh, this summer we have hired four professional staff members, a two special education teachers, a math teacher, and a new guidance counselor. So looking forward to transferring them into our buildings and working with them as part of our staff this year. Uh, the custodians actually this summer we've put a lot of the district custodians within the middle school as we've stripped all the floors so not just washed and cleaned them but really stripped them down uh, re-waxed them so really looking forward to welcoming children back into the school this year with a extremely clean and, and tidy building so a, a lot of efforts been going on into that this summer from our custodial maintenance staff so a lot of appreciation for them uh, a couple important dates to really remember we do have an open house on August 29th and that goes from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock and again that's a very informal open house so a great opportunity to meet put faces with names maybe see where your classroom might be or your team might be and um, other some other dates that are going to be important we have our um, first day of school September 3rd so we know we always start after Labor Day so uh, you know hopefully uh, we're rested and, and ready for a great school year uh, my opportunity for principal and taking this, this opportunity is really uh, to work with families, help children be successful, really get them to a place where they need to be independently uh, so they can transition to high school and go off into a, a field of study, whatever that may be. Um, it might be post high school into a, a two-year or four-year college. It might be into the trades, but really just hoping that we're building these skills for these children to be independent, to find some passion in what they do. And the middle school years are just such a fun time to start to do that and start to find some really, for the first time, some independence. Uh, I'm sure as parents, you know, it's the, do I give them the cell phone now or do I not give them the cell phone now? But really that's that time that they're, they're really looking to find out who they are and, and start their journey as young, young adults. And so to be able to be in a position as a principal to help facilitate that and help guide uh, children and families and staff, uh, really looking forward to that opportunity. I think, like I said, we hired some staff, looking forward to them being an immediate impact into our, our building and into our communities. And um, it's, it's, it's a lot for kids. We come from seven towns. Uh, come into our school plus Middleton so we get a lot of change for a lot of kids some children are coming with 12 to 13 children they've been with for seven years and others upwards to 80 90 children that they've been with for up, up to seven years so quite a quite a um, melting pot if you will of where kids are at and where they're coming from so really great opportunity to kind of really build bring together our communities in a way that supports independence also social social development um, and, and hopefully some passion for, for, for learning. And uh, given those opportunities, uh, really looking forward to a great school year. Please know that my door and my phone's always on, door's always open to uh, families, even if it's just a kind of a meet and greet to a question you might have. I, I really, the opportunities to connect and to build those relationships is, is critical for me to be, find myself to be successful. Um, so, Really looking forward to a great year and, and a great working with, with uh, the Wolfport community, but 
all the, all the communities that are coming into our school. Um, and for some of our first time parents, I welcome you to the Kingswood Regional Middle School. And some of our returning parents, uh, I, I uh, welcome you to hopefully uh, an opportunity to work with me and, and work with your child. So thank you very much. Thank you, James. And this is why we have him on. This is kind of the relationship that we have with the school system, and especially I have with James, uh, well, Principal Riley. Um, it's, it's, it's a great relationship that we, the police department have with the um, SAU and with the Governor Wentworth system and Crescent Lake and Carpenter School. Um, we, we really have a great communication that, that we keep it open. And I do want to mention one thing that I thought was amazing with um, Mr. Riley that I did mention to him. So my son's uh, just finished sixth grade and um, he had sixth grade promotion, which I thought was um, really well done. And during that um, promotion, Mr. Riley announces every student um, by their names and they basically get a certificate for their sixth grade promotion. The most amazing part I thought is every kid, and I can't remember how many kids that you do have in that grade. So 85 last year. So 85, he never used a piece of paper, nothing. He had it all in his head, he knew every kid's name. It was remarkable, it was pretty amazing. Um, and I mentioned him to that before. No paper, no nothing, the kids just came up, he knew them, the kids know him. The, the relationship that he has with kids is, is pretty remarkable um, on how he teaches them and knows everybody and gives everybody the, the chance and the time. And um, it, it is pretty amazing, nice, nice work. No, and thank you, and, and really it's about the relationships. It's really relationships, 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 and uh, after that, everything kind of works itself out in that sense. If we're available for learning, we're going to learn a whole lot more, and, and we're only available because we're, we're around adults that trust us. We, we uh, start to trust ourselves, and, and again, that relationship piece is, is big. Will I remember 400 names? I hope so. I hope so. I have a little shorter period of time to do that, uh, but it's important. It's important when you acknowledge a child by their first name. Um, you, you know a little bit about them because then again, it's, it's, it's really their school and I just happen to be in a role that, that helps kind of put, put stakeholders together. But really at the end of the day, it's, it's the community school and the kids' school. So um, thank you. So th that's, that's pretty much what we have all today. I want to thank um, the Downtown Grill for hosting us here um, and then um, the Wolf Bar Community Television. Um, at any time, if you want to get on the show, um, as always, uh, email um, the Wolfboro Community Television, email myself, or email the Chief of Police, uh, Dean Rondo, who's, as you see, not here today. But um, that's all I got today, so enjoy the summer. Uh, the, school se the school season is starting in September, and um, keep an eye out there. Enjoy. Thank you. So hello. So I got two guests here that want to talk and maybe ask a question or just say hi. I don't know exactly. But I got Lily and Beatrice. They're, they're here today. Uh, do you want to talk? And what grade are you in? Uh, I'm in sixth grade. I'm in sixth grade, too. So what? So you come here every, every year up to Wolf Bar and stop in and eat. But you're on, where do you guys stay? Uh, we stay at Sandy Island for two weeks. Yeah, it's like a family camp, so we're sort of a family. So do you have any questions to ask or anything about our police department or what you guys, what do you guys want to do when you grow up? Um, I want to be an interior designer. I want to be an athlete. Oh, nice. What, what sport do you play right now? Track, soccer, and gymnastics. Oh, wow. Do you play any sports? I do swimming. Swimming. And then you want to be an interior designer? Nice. So you, at least you know at your age what you want to be, which is, which is a good thing, because that, that's a hard uh, thing to decide at this time. So is there anything else that you have on, any topics or anything like that? So I know you guys are from different New York and Connecticut. Um, how big is your town where you are? Uh, mine's like pretty big, I think. I live in New York City, so really big. So hers is very big. <laughs> so this is much different than uh, New York City. So uh, my wife um, did a lot of dancing in New York City when she was younger, which was really neat. Cause I used to do ballet. But ballet. Yes. Yeah, so she teaches in town here. 
um, ballet, all this, all the um, different kind of dances that are here. So, but any any other things that you want to know about Wolfboro or any questions or what to do? What do you think you want to do? To eat? Maybe have ice cream? We just go shopping a lot. In, in Wolfboro? Yeah. So what did you shop? Blacks, Blacks and pennies. Yeah, we came yesterday and we got a lot of candy and we got ice cream. Oh, nice. Well, kudos to the mo mother taking them to all that <laughs> and eating in there. So anything else you want to say? Is that it? That is it. So that's all we got today. Um, I got thank you for Lily and Beatrice for coming up here, staying in Wolfboro, enjoying it, doing this every year. Um, and enjoy your month. Have a good one. Hello, I'm Captain Mark Libby uh, for the safety tip of the month. So the safety tip today is going to be heat stroke. And why I bring that up is we're in the month of August and we're still having those days of 90, 95. They're still going to have it out there. Actually, this weekend is going to be the end of July is going to be hot. It's going to be 90 degrees. So why do I say heat stroke? So you've got to be prepared yourself. Um, basically, what I really look at is kids in a vehicle, animals in a vehicle, uh, you can't leave them in a vehicle at any time with the windows down. Even if you put the windows down, if it's 95 degrees outside, it's going to be hot. So prepare yourself for those days. Pre give yourself enough um, fluids, water, uh, keep drinking, and get yourself in some shade, air condition if it gets hot. So that's what I got for the tip of the month, um, the heat stroke. Be careful. Keep your animals out of the vehicles in hot weather, especially in August here. And um, enjoy, enjoy your month. Thank you.